I'm tired. I think I'll hit the hay. What? Tonight's New Year's Eve. Time for Dickel a Flocket to party hardy. No, I don't want to. I'm tired. Okay. Looks like Wifey's ready too. Okay, Peanut. Come on. Let's hit the sack. Good night, Buzz. Good night, Dickel. Good night, Wifey. Good night, Dickel. Good night, Buzz. Good night, Wifey. Good night, Peanut. Good night, Peanut. Good night, Peanut. Good night, John Boy. John Boy? John Boy. Oops, wrong family. Good, Good night, night, Dickel. Dickel. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Experimenting with Buzz. Now, since my last video, I've had a few suggestions about improving the hum problem. Personally, the hum doesn't bother me. I can live with it. It doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> yeah, right. But just for test purposes, we're going to do a few tests here. The first thing uh, I was suggested was to change the the 8 microfarad uh, cap, which is the first filter cap, and go a little bit higher with it to see if we can reduce the hum that way. Now originally this radio had the 8 microfarad capacitor as the first capacitor. The second one is supposed to be a 4, but I've got two 8s in here. Right! So what I want to do here, before I do anything, Brandon suggested swapping the wires huh? on the, the, the field coil, you know, just swapping them and, and that's the easiest to do. So we can just do that and uh, see if there's any difference. So let's turn the radio on. And we'll let it warm up. Radio, it's free. Why not? Okay, I've got the scope hooked up to the voice coil, so we can read what that uh, hum is. And here is the hum signal. Now the scope is set for uh, 20 millivolts per division, so that's 20, 40, 60, just about 80 millivolts we're measuring. Okay, now this is the way it was wired before. Now to uh, do Brendan's suggestion, to just swap the uh, the field coil wires. Let's try that, okay? All right, but I hope we aren't making a mistake. I'm gonna power down. Swap this like that. Turn it back on. Devilishly clever. Give it a minute to warm up. Well, are we just going to sit here and wait? Now right there I noticed the difference with my naked ear. <gasps> the hum did go down. Wow. If we look at the scope. Oh. Uh, we're looking at uh, 20, 40, 60, a little, little past 60. So it reduced it a little bit. Yes. Almost 15 millivolts. So I'm going to wire it in like that. So now we know that uh, reversing the field coil wires does make a difference in the hum. So once I uh, solder those uh, on there permanently, we can experiment with the, uh, the 8 microfarad cap. And what I think I'll do is I'll put a 4 microfarad across the cap in parallel, which will make it a 12. And we can see if there's any difference between them. I'm going to bring the microphone up close so we can see if there's any difference in the, the hum through the microphone. Because I can hear it through my, my ears. Let's see if you can hear it through the mic. I'm going to put a, a 4.7 microfarad capacitor in parallel with this so we should get a 12 microfarad with that in parallel so the yellow is the plus plus goes here oops huh? 
<laughs> I must be colorblind here. Yellow goes here, and the green is the ground, which is this. All right. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that right here. I'm gonna flip it on and bring it up slow. So here we go. Here we go. And there's 90 volts. And there's about 110 right here. We're gonna let that warm up a bit and then we're gonna look at the scope and see if that brought down the hum. Uh, I hope so. Just by my naked ear again. Hope you ladies aren't offended by my naked ear. <laughs> I think it uh, reduced it quite a bit with just the 4.7. Let's take a look at the scope. Holy cow! As you can see, it uh, it took it down quite a bit. That is cool, I think. Let's turn up the volume on the radio. We all have different issues that we need to address to help us lose weight. So the diet and cleanse is Now, I'm probably going to leave it right as it is, but for experimental purposes, I'm going to put a higher capacity cap on there and uh, see what happens. Stick around. There might be a fireworks. Okay, I uh, found a 10 microfarad at 450 volts. Now we're going to put this in there and uh, see uh, how much better this improves it. Now, the green is the ground, Buzz. Don't reverse it. Green is ground. Oh, brother. And the yellow is plus. All right. Turn the variac up. Here we go. I'm just going to bring it up real fast here. To right about 115. Let's take a look at the scope. Oh! And that brought it down to less than 40 millivolts. Now I still hear a hum on the speaker, but it's it's very, very mild. Now for test purposes, let's go up a little bit higher. Now there's no way I'm going to uh, put anything higher than this one in here. Because if I put a larger one in there, Brendan said that stresses out the rectifier when on a cold start so we don't want to do that so I'm going to use one of these two but let's just see what happens if we put a 22 microfarad in there plus the 8 which brings it up to 30 all right let's try that I don't want to discharge that because it's probably charged <laughs> right here I have a 22 microfarad okay Buzz, the green. This thing is so slick, I can't open it up. Goes to the negative. Mm -hmm. And the yellow goes to the positive. Mm -hmm. By using the Variac, it doesn't stress out the uh, rectifiers as much as if I just flipped it on real fast on full power. Okay, there's uh, about 115. And let's look at the scope here. Holy smoke! As we can see, it brought it down to 20 millivolts. So, a higher filter cap will indeed reduce the hum. And I can barely hear anything on it now. <gasps> That's amazing! That's quite uh, surprising. Oh yeah! Let's bring. Hey, 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 be careful! Be careful! The microphone right into the cone.
As you can hear, that is quite a difference. Let's put the 10 back in and uh, then we can measure the volume on that one. Now that's with the mic uh, right up there. The 10 might be a good one to use. I'll have to get together with Brendan to see what he says. So, that concludes this edition of Experimenting with Buzz. Hmm. You all know about the company named Westinghouse, but how many people know about the man behind the company? George Westinghouse was born in 1846 in Central Bridge, New York, west of Albany. When the family moved to Schenectady, his father established a shop for agricultural machinery and small steam engines. He served in both the Union Army and Navy during the Civil War. After the war, Westinghouse returned to his father's shop where, in 1865, he developed and acquired a patent for a rotary steam engine. That same year, he invented a device for placing derailed freight cars back on their tracks. The safety record of the early American railroad industry was dismal. Steam engines exploded, trains rammed into one another or derailed frequently. As a response to one of these problems, Westinghouse in 1868 developed the air brake, providing a reliable way of stopping a train. The Westinghouse Air Brake Company was formed the following year. This invention was slowly adopted by many railroads in the United States, but it became mandatory equipment with the passage of the Railway Safety Appliance Act in 1893. George Westinghouse became a leader in the introduction of alternating current transmission technology to the United States. Early electric service had been provided by direct current, whose proponents bitterly resisted any change. His firm faith in the alternating current system led to the founding of the Westinghouse Electric Company in 1886, which was in bold opposition to the well-entrenched backers of the direct current system led by Thomas Edison. By the turn of the century, Westinghouse's enterprises had grown to employ over 50,000 workers. The famed inventor Nikola Tesla was employed by Westinghouse to develop electric motors. Westinghouse used Tesla's system to light the world's Columbian Exposition at Chicago in 1893. This system was also a factor in the Westinghouse Electric Company's winning the contract to install the first power machinery at Niagara Falls, which bore Tesla's name and patent numbers. Here is a rare recording of Tesla expressing his thoughts of George Westinghouse during that time. George Westinghouse was, in my opinion, the only man on this globe who could take my existing alternating current system and win the battle against prejudice and money power. He was one of the world's true noblemen of whom America can be proud of and to whom humanity owes an immense debt of gratitude. Yavor, yavor. The Panic of 1907 was a six-week stretch of runs on banks in New York City and other American cities in October and early November of 1907. During the depression which followed this panic, George Westinghouse suffered huge financial losses and terminated his relationship with his companies. By 1911, he was no longer active in business and his health was in decline. George Westinghouse died in 1914 but the company he built lived on. And thanks to that, Buzz 1151 now owns a 1934 Westinghouse radio. Okay, I have decided to remove the 8, and I'm going to put in a 30 here. And it's going to be a tight fit. I might have to stack it. I'm going to have to rearrange this. Well, <laughs> there it is. Oh, brother! Looking pretty damn ugly, I think. Let's see if it fits. Oh, how very thrilling! Well, I guess that's all that matters, huh? 
All right, I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to show you uh, the modification that uh, Brandon came up with so we can uh, not stress out the rectifier tube with the higher capacity capacitor in here, so it don't go away. Okay, there's the mod I put in on pin one of the rectifier. I uh, got this 5 watt 200 ohm uh, resistor here and I got that hooked on pin one and then on the other side of the resistor I've got the uh, 30 microfarad and the field coil wires on the other end so this puts less stress on the rectifier tube because uh, that cap charges up pretty fast. Unlike in the old days, they had those older ones. They took a while for them to uh, charge. So this is just a safety measure. So let's fire it up here, all right? Let's see what happens. Okay, we'll just power it up here. Got my Variac here. This is hooked up to the B+. So let's just uh, bring it up. I know it's wired up right, so I'm just gonna keep going. Till I get to about 115. Hold on tight. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. You'll see this drop down as it warms up. At the present time, all systems are go. All lights are green. And we'll take a look at the scope to see uh, what the noise signal looks like now, since we have the 30 microfarad capacitor in there. As you can see, it. Uh, it's just exactly like it was when we tested it. It's measuring 20 millivolts. Wonderful! Wonderful! And so that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week we'll take a look at the cabinet and see what we can do with it. Till then, have a good one. This is Buzz. Good night, John boy.